future. They're worried the government won't act. Credit is frozen. People aren't lending money from bank to bank, or they're not lending money to, to our medium and small-sized businesses. And that means people's jobs are in jeopardy. And the bill that's before the House of Representatives tomorrow is a bill that has got the best chance of providing liquidity, providing credit, providing money so small businesses and medium-sized businesses can function. Corporate bankruptcies are absolutely skyrocketing. Small businesses, consumer purchasing power, and consumer spending is in shambles as inflation continues to wreak havoc across the economy. They will ask the questions, what type of businesses exactly are going out of business, and what does that say about the economy, and what does that say about the consumer? Now, before I get into that, you guys, happy Friday. We made it, and welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Obviously, this video is going to be absolutely bonkers. And... The data is in. Mainstream media wants you to ignore the data. It wants you to ignore your eyes and your ears. They just want you to trust the system. But here's the thing, you guys, the system is designed to profit off of our failure. And so when we go through the data today, some of this data actually looks like we're already in recession. Because it's Friday, I want to start this video off with some good news. Red Lobster is not going out of business despite going into bankruptcy. This is great news, especially if you like those Red Lobster biscuits. I'm not telling you guys to go out this weekend and go waste your money at Red Lobster. If you want some of those biscuits, Costco has the mixture of those biscuits. Go get them. But I thought that was great news. Being that it's 4 a.m., let me give you a quick view of what's going on in the market, starting with the reverse repo market, which is an additional source of liquidity and inflation in the market. As you guys can see here, the reverse repo market has been going down, not quite as much as we want, but this is a great thing because this is inflation. Inflation is evil. The reverse repo market is now down to $303 billion. We definitely want this to go bye-bye. In addition to that, guys, going into Friday, August 9th, we are five basis points from inversion of the 10 and the two year yields. I asked you guys on Monday whether or not you thought we were going to uninvert. And I've actually had someone say that we briefly uninverted on Monday. I personally didn't see it. Either way, you guys, we got one more day to potentially get to uninversion. And do me a favor, comment below. Let me know whether or not you think we're going to be uninverted this week. Or do you think it's going to be later on in this month. The first company I want to talk to you about is a 134 year old company that is closing down over 500 stores. Now this one hits close to home because when I got to Texas around 2012, I was still struggling trying to rebuild my credit. And this company and this store was one of the first places that I went to, to try to reestablish my credit. But good thing I didn't because it turns out there are a bunch of cons. A 134-year-old American furniture chain files bankruptcy, closes all 553 stores. The name of the company, naturally, cons. And I'll tell you guys again, when I went in there to go to reestablish my credit because that was their theme, come buy overpriced TVs from us and we'll help reestablish your credit. What I found out was is they're doing personal loans and installment loans. It wasn't even revolving debt. So you never even reestablish your credit to begin with. To be honest, guys, I'm not surprised a company like this is going out of business because it's doom spending. It's discretionary spending. And those are the first companies that will go out of business because they need the consumers to continue to spend. But let's see exactly what they said as to why they are going bankrupt. They quote significant headwinds, including dramatic shifts in consumer behavior, as well as interest rate pressures, inflation, and increased costs. Inflation absolutely destroyed them. And it's not just them. That's just a company that's been around for over 130 years. Multiple corporations going bankrupt right now. In fact, we are at the highest pace of corporate bankruptcies since 20. 10. Let me show you. This is a graph that goes from year to date all the way to June. Now year to date all the way to June is in blue. The orange is the remaining part of the year or rest of the year. You guys can see that right there. Now what's very interesting is, is we've already had 346 US companies 
file for bankruptcy. And again, look at going all the way back. The last time we had a higher number than that was 2010, which was right outside of the recession. But after 2010, you guys, that trajectory went downward. Right now, the trajectory, and this is very, very important for you guys to understand, the trajectory is going upward. If you want to understand whether or not we're going into recession, which will lead to unemployment, which will lead to price drops, right? You got to understand what's going on underneath the hood. You have to see the math and you have to understand trajectory. And also I'll throw in there, you got to understand the overwhelming fraud and data manipulation. Regardless, you guys, US companies right now and the bankruptcies are absolutely skyrocketing. The proof is right here. These are the largest bankruptcies so far in 2024. Now this is up to July 1st. I don't recognize too many of these companies. You guys go ahead and pause this if you really wanna take a look. Now obviously number four here is Red Lobster Management. Now I did number this to one through 17 to just indicate to you guys that this is $17 billion worth of bankruptcies. 17 billion in half of these companies. Again, I've never, even heard of. Another thing about Red Lobster, how does Red Lobster have over $1 billion in liabilities? They should be having $1 billion in assets because those biscuits are that good. But apparently the all you can eat shrimp was not that good for their bottom line, at least according to them. Here's what's really alarming. We gotta ask ourselves, what sector are these bankruptcies of these companies coming from? When I show you this information, it should be extremely revealing. Take a look, guys. By far, the number one sector, primary sector with bankruptcies is obviously consumer discretionary spending. People will choose to leave their lights on versus going to cons to buy an overpriced TV. Discretionary spending in those companies, you guys, massive, massive bankruptcies. Now, number two is tied with number three. So number two is actually healthcare, and number three is industrials. Very interesting, but nevertheless, what this shows us, and this is proof that consumer spending and purchasing power, you guys, is absolutely a dumpster fire. I'll go over all of the stats with consumers and I'll show you guys and I'll prove to you guys that not only are companies going out of business, but consumers are absolutely wrecked. And as a result of that, the bankruptcies, the delinquencies are just going to increase probably for a period of two to three years. But before I go into that and to give this video a little bit more balance, since we've already listened to George Bush, let's take a listen to Obama and what he was saying to get elected. And then ask yourself this as you're listening to this video, is the same thing gonna happen in 2025? Congress should pass this emergency rescue plan, the rescue plan for Main Street as soon as possible. If Washington can move quickly to pass a rescue plan for our financial system, there's no reason we can't move just as quickly to pass a rescue plan for our middle class that will create jobs and provide relief and help homeowners. And if Congress does not act in the coming months, It'll be one of the first things I do as president of the United States of America. All I'm saying, you guys, is, is I really hope they don't pass a new rescue plan. Now, helping the people at the very bottom that actually really, truly need help, I'm all for helping those people. But the problem is they print a ton of money and throw a blanket over the economy, and it's rampant with fraud. Fraud is more powerful the quantitative tightening. Let's go into some data that shows you guys the health and purchasing power of consumers, starting with household debt. This is crazy. We're not quite at 18 trillion, but you guys, we're very close to having $18 trillion worth of household debt. I've highlighted the vertical row right there that shows back in 2005 to 2010, the state of the household debt going into recession. It's very interesting that household debt increased until they go into recession. When people go into recession, guess what? They stop getting into debt because generally there's credit tightening and they start saving their money. And that happened after the GFC for probably three years. That's why I'm saying you guys, after we go into recession, it's gonna more than likely take several years to get back to balance. But nevertheless, consumers right now are drowning in $18 trillion in consumer debt. This next one is super scary. We're gonna go to debt balance per capita. And I gotta tell you guys, as someone that had a bankruptcy and that someone that was drowning in debt, it's a horrible place to be. 
It's an absolutely horrible place to be. And if you're in credit card debt, the only thing that I can tell you is to start with the bottom one and work your way up and stop any reckless spending. Now, I'm not saying necessarily everyone that's in credit card debt is reckless spending. Some people actually are buying groceries and staying alive with the credit card debt. But what I am saying is, is you guys got to try to get that under control because it's absolutely horrible, horrible debt to have. But also the other thing is it's a necessary evil to getting great exceptional credit. We're over $60,000 in average household debt. $60,000. And imagine if you're a renter and you have $60,000 in debt. And then imagine if that's all credit cards. I've been having more and more talks, whether they're friends or just people that email me about them having $20,000, $30,000 in credit card debt and them considering going bankrupt. A lot of people can't get simply get out of $20,000 in credit card debt. And I generally ask them the same thing. What did you spend your money on? And almost every single time it's Amazon. It's like buying junk on Amazon. Delete the app. Delete the app if you have a, an addiction problem with Amazon. Get yourself out of the rat race. The real question is, is our consumers able to afford that amount of debt? And that answer, you guys, is no, they are not. Take a look at this right here. This is serious delinquencies for credit card debt. And real quick, I wanna tell you guys, when consumers and Americans stop making the payments on their bills, the whole financing sector will go up in flames. That is a 100% fact, and that's why unemployment is so dangerous. But look at this, guys. The trajectory of seriously delinquent credit cards is shocking. And this is 90 days late. If someone has a 90 day late on their credit report, their credit shot for years. Their purchasing power is gone. And that's exactly what happened during the GFC. It wasn't necessarily a subprime crisis. It was more about speculation, but it was also about consumer purchasing power during the GFC got shot and credit got tighter. Now take a look, you guys, again, very shocking to think about an over 6% delinquency rate. Now, the last time, and I want you guys to look at this chart, that we had this level of delinquencies was around 2011. But here's the thing that I want you to understand. When we hit that level of delinquency back in 2011, look at the trajectory. The trajectory was going down. Right now, the trajectory was going up. And I want you guys to think about what I'm about to tell you. Right before the great financial crisis, the delinquency rate was lower, which means the credit card delinquency rate right now for serious delinquency is higher right now than it was right before the GFC. So looking at this chart, it is possible we are already in recession. Now, the biggest reasons why I kind of leaning that we're not in a technical recession is basically the inflation in the market. And we see it in the reverse repo market. We also see that in credit tightening. There's really been no credit tightening. So that's why it's really hard for me to think that we're in recession because no credit tightening. But when we have that credit tightening, usually it feels like it happens overnight. It's not just credit cards, it's also auto loans. Take a look at this. New seriously delinquent auto loans. You guys, look at the trajectory. It's almost three percent and that's 90 days old that's right before a repo now this is a very very bad sign and i'm wondering are they going to bail out the auto sector again i hope not because i don't want to bail out chevy and ford again they make crappy vehicles excuse my language but i want you guys to pay attention again to the trajectory the last time we had this level of auto loan delinquency again was around 2010 but when we had that level of delinquency it was going down. Again, when we had that level of delinquency, it was going down. Right now, it is skyrocketing upward. And just like credit card debt, if you look at this chart, we had, again, this is so crazy, we had a lower delinquency rate right before the GFC, which means the delinquency rate for vehicles, just like credit cards, are higher now. We could possibly be in recession already, regardless of the credit tightening and the inflation. Absolutely mind-blowing. Here's a real big problem, you guys. Household savings. Now, generally, this thing skyrockets when we're in recession. So that's another reason why I don't think necessarily we're in recession, because when we go into recession, it forces people to stop spending 
and start saving. Take a look, you guys. We're at 3.4% of income being saved, quite frankly, because people can't save money because of inflation and also bad spending habits. But I wanna point out, again, the trajectory of the savings rate is overall going down. The last time we had this level of savings, you guys, was again, it, this is all adding up to the GFC, so so crazy to me, was in the, was in the GFC, but again, at that time, the savings rate was going up because again, we went into recession, recession, savings rates usually goes up. Right now, you guys, the savings rate is going down. The trajectories are a huge tail for what's going on in the labor market and what's going on with businesses. It is a shambles right now, absolute shambles. The market's just overly optimistic like they always are. Every single time, no matter of the market, these suits are gonna get you and try to convince you to spend your money. Here's one of my biggest arguments on why I believe that we're gonna have price crashing. It's the income, guys. And let me tell you before I show you this chart, if income growth would have matched prices absolutely skyrocketing, then okay, these prices will be sustained. If we had real income growth, but the thing is, guys, it was never real to begin with. The reason why prices went up was lockdowns. It was money printing and low interest rates. It was all artificial. How did the market forget that? We went through a, an emergency lockdown. But regardless, I can prove it. Take a look at this, guys. This is US real median household income. And I wanna point out, look at the peak. The peak was right at the end of 2019, beginning of January, 2020. You guys, we are still off peak. Now I like this because this goes to June of 2024. You guys know how lagging income data is, but essentially what has happened here, because we've had a slight, apparently according to their data, somehow we've had a very slight adjusted for inflation increase in income. But when we go back and we track, when was the last time we had this level of income? It's March of 2020. We have literally had no income growth in four years. And so I would ask, how is it possible for prices to sustain when the math simply does not add up? Consumers simply cannot afford this life anymore. And we see it again with the debt exploding, the lack of savings and delinquencies skyrocketing. And then you ask why? Why can't they afford it? They did in the 70s, they did in the 80s. Well, in the 70s and 80s, the income growth was skyrocketing. Again, let me show you this chart. The income growth, we can't even get back to the peak, you guys. We're still four years. No income growth. Doesn't add up, does it? That's gonna wrap up your Friday morning report and a couple other things I wanna remind you of. If you guys wanna change, you wanna fight the corruption, you wanna fight the fraud on the Central Appraisal District, we're being taxed like crazy. They are robbing homeowners. Sign the petition in my description and join the movement. And while you're at it, if you haven't already taken my free home buying course, take it. And by the way, and I'll tell you in the course, I'm not, absolutely not telling you to buy a house. I'm just trying to prepare you to buy a house because I believe that as long as we're patient and working in our purchasing power, we will get a deal of our dreams. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me. This has been one radical week. I have no idea what's going to happen with futures. The 10 years basically sideways. Futures are basically sideways. It's going to be a crazy ride today. And I just want to leave you with this. Do not go out this weekend and drink. Go out this weekend to a park and re-budget with your spouse. If you have one, if not, just re-budget. Now, other than that, guys, if you're out there investing in real estate, you guys already know I wish you luck and I hope you win.